So again, welcome everyone to the YWCA Rock County Summer Lunch and Learn. I am so excited um, to be joined by Madeline Guthrie for a discussion on expungements and pardons. But before we officially jump in, I just wanted to pause and remind everyone that today would have been the 83rd birthday of Emmett Lewis Till. I'm wearing black and white in solidarity with the Emmett Till Legacy Foundation is they celebrate him with the annual A Time for Unity in Black and White. Um, so if this is something that you would like to learn more about, uh, please don't hesitate to visit the Emmett Till Legacy Foundation. Um, again, I'm asking that everyone, so happy that you're here, can't wait to see all of your faces once we open the discussion up uh, with the audience near the end. But if you could keep your camera off until that point, that would be greatly appreciated. All right. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Madeline, let's jump right in. Um, share with us, what is a typical day like for you and your role as a staff attorney with Legal Action Wisconsin? So um, as a staff attorney, my practice area is barriers to employment. Um, so a lot of my day to day is conversations with clients. Um, I'm doing um, initial arrest record review, um, phone calls with clients to prepare pardon applications, explain their arrest record. Um, it's also a lot of requesting documents from the courts, reviewing documents. Um, I also have been doing a a lot of outreach recently in Rock County. So it's been a lot of meeting with community groups and um, people in Rock County um, because I'm based in Madison. Um, and then I'm also active in our uh, our firm's DEI initiative. So I'm a, a co-facilitator of a, an affinity group. Um, I'm on the DEI committee and I'm a member of a racial equity book club at our um, firm as well. So, yeah. Wonderful. It sounds like you are wearing many hats and we appreciate <laughs> that. Um, so for those of us that are not familiar with the process or the terminology, could you take a few moments and explain to us the difference between a pardon and expungement? Yes. So people often use the term pardon and expungement interchangeably, but really they're two different things. Um, they have different requirements and different effects. So a pardon is technically considered an official grant of forgiveness from the governor. Each governor can set their own rules about um, who is eligible for a pardon. So currently, Governor Evers allows pardon applications for Wisconsin felony convictions. Um, and the requirements are that a person has been, it has been at least five years since the person completed their sentencing, and that's sentencing for any crime, not just the one that um, you're asking a pardon for. Um, the person also cannot have any pending criminal cases or charges in any jurisdiction, not just Wisconsin, so that includes other states, um, as well as federal cases, and then the person also cannot be required to register as a sex offender. Um, so broadly, pardons are available right now for um, Wisconsin felony convictions. Um, there are two different types of expungement that we refer to. The most common, um, well, I guess the one that most people refer to is conviction record expungement. Um, and that's where that seals the case from the public. So for a conviction after July 1st of 2009, a person must have been under the age of 25 at the time the offense was committed. Um, and the offense had to have been a misdemeanor or a first time nonviolent HRI felony. Um, the tricky part is expungement has to be ordered at the time of sentencing. So it's not something that you can come and ask for after the fact. Um, it's something that when you're sentenced, the judge has to say, if you complete your sentence su successfully, this case can be expunged. Um, and then that's the last part of the requirement is that someone successfully completes their their sentence, um, typically probation. Um, if they do all of that, then there's typically a hearing and a person has to show that the they will benefit from the expungement and that society will not be harmed by the expungement. Um, prior to July 1st, 2009, um, there are different requirements. The law was different then. So if you have a conviction um, from before July 1st of 2009, you have to have been under the age of 21 at the time the offense was committed, and it's only available for misdemeanors. So those low-level H or I felonies would not qualify. 
Um, and then a rest record expungement is the second kind of expungement that not many people are aware of. Um, and this removes arrest cycles from a person's criminal history report, which are uh, maintained by Wisconsin's Department of Justice, the Crime Information Bureau there. Um, and you're eligible to have an arrest cycle removed when you were arrested and um, either the prosecutor decided not to prosecute the charges for whatever reason, or maybe they did decide to prosecute, but the case was dismissed or you were found not guilty at a trial. Um, so in that case, if all the charges were dismissed or not prosecuted, you can get that actually taken off of your background check. Um, and so that's something that not everyone is aware of. No, that's really important, especially when you're you're talking about securing housing or employment. Um, are there things that Legal Action Wisconsin or other groups that you are aware of do that to get the, I have so many questions, to get the word out about this may be an available option to you? And, and, and if you could back up to, um, are there things in place that ensure that a judge would let the person know if they are eligible, if they are eligible for expungement or not, uh, upon successful completion of the process that you outlined, um, and if that doesn't happen for some reason, does that person have any recourse to come back and say, "Hey, this is something that I'm interested in, and I want to successfully complete a plan"? Yeah. So um, the judge really doesn't have any obligation to inform the person of their right to an expungement. Um, so what we're trying to do is, like you said, get the word out. Um, if you do have a pending case, it's something that you should definitely talk to like your public defender or your private attorney about. Um, sometimes it's just not something that's asked for because a lot of cases end in a plea and maybe it's just not part of the plea bargain. Um, but yeah, judges don't have any any uh, responsibility to let people know about that option. Um, and if the judge doesn't order it at sentencing, there really is no way for a person to come back after the fact and ask for it, unfortunately. Okay. And now yeah. you've brought up plea bargains. So if you agree to a plea bargain, expungement and pardons are off of the table or are those still an option? So... Um, if the if the judge orders expungement, like maybe a expungement could be part of the plea bargain, um, then that's fine. Um, pardons, though, that that's completely separate. So a judge does not have to order that you can pardon a case um, at the time of sentencing. It's it's just for expungements, if that makes sense. Um, so anyone anyone can apply for a pardon if they've been convicted of a Wisconsin felony and meet all of those requirements. It's just that for expungements, the judge has to order, once you complete your sentence, you can have this case expunged. Perfect. So it can be a part of a plea bargain, um, but not necessarily. And if it is not, then expungement is then removed as an option. Is that correct? Um, if the judge doesn't order that expungement, then yeah, it's not an option. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and, and then just to follow up, um, how are organizations like yours getting the word out to individuals with pending cases or hopefully individuals before, um, a, a case is even on, uh, they're a part of a case. Um, what an expungement is, and then how they can utilize that option. Yeah, so we're starting to do a lot more outreach in Rock County. Um, that's been one of my goals is to get the word out a lot more. Um, we do have a very active um, expungement and pardon clinic in Dane County for a Dane County residents. So um, I think it's a matter of making sure that we are getting the word out to all the counties that we represent, um, including Rock County. Um, so this is talking with different community groups um, like um, community action, um, family services, um, YWCA, talking with all these community groups so that they can let their clients know, hey, you have this, you might be eligible to get legal services from legal action. Um, so that's kind of how we've been going about it. Yeah. Sounds good. And thank you for the work that you're doing in that area. 
Um, next question, is there a difference between juvenile and adult expungements? Yes. Um, the biggest difference is that the judge doesn't have to order it at the sentencing. So um, juveniles, it's just when you turn the age of 17, that's when you can apply for expungement. And like adult expungement, they just have to show that they would benefit from the expungement and society would not be harmed by it. So again, the biggest difference is there's not that strict requirement that it be ordered at the time of sentencing. Good to know. Um, and, and thank you for highlighting that kind of um, two steps that are, are addressed. Like how would you benefit and how would society not be harmed? Um, along those lines, how can a pardon or expungement positively impact the, well, you've kind of outlaid how it can impact the individual who receives it, um, but also the broader community. Why should anyone that is not dealing with a case, has not dealt with a case, why should we be interested in the benefit of expungements and pardons? How does that benefit our broader community? Yeah, so I'll speak just a little bit more to the individual first. I don't think I mentioned exactly the impact that pardons and expungements have. Um, so criminal records are just really stigmatizing and they have a lot of collateral consequences. Not just, it's not just you commit a crime and you go to jail and then you're on probation and then it's done. Um, those convictions haunt you and follow you for the rest of your life, unfortunately. Um, so pardons and expungements can remedy some of those collateral consequences that come up. Um, so for pardons, um, they restore civil, some civil rights that were lost because of the felony conviction. So this can include the right to own a firearm, um, which is a big one for people in Wisconsin, especially, um, the right to hold public office, um, Important to know, it doesn't restore your right to vote. Your vote, right to vote in Wisconsin is restored after you complete your sentence. So just so everybody um, knows that. Um, for employment specifically, a pardon prevents employers from discriminating against you for that conviction that was pardoned. Um, so some employers can discriminate for criminal convictions when they're substantially related to the job, um, but a pardon makes it so that they can't do that anymore. Um, and then less formally, I would say, uh, you know, people, it'll help people be able to volunteer at their kids or their grandkids school. Um, it helps with acceptance into higher education or technical schools. Uh, it can help obtain loans um, for truck drivers that can help you be able to go outside of the, the United States. Um, and then I would say the biggest impact can be mental and emotional. Um, it's it's hard for people to have that record um, and it can be a huge relief when they get a pardon. Um, criminal record expungement. Um, so I, like I said, it, it seals the court record. Um, the court destroys the paper file of the case. The case is removed from CCAP um, and a person's arrest record is updated to say this case was expunged. So just like a pardon, employers can no longer discriminate against you for that conviction. Um, so that's a huge one for, for employment, especially. Um, for impact on the broader community, research shows that maintaining stable employment actually reduces the risk of recidivism. So if you, you know, want less crime in your community, making sure that people can get a job and a high paying, well paying job is important. Um, I would also say that expungements and pardons, you know, make more people eligible to work and it increases the diversity in the workforce, right? Um, people with criminal convictions have a lot to offer and lots of skills and knowledge. Um, and so allowing them to enter the workforce can be really good for the economy. Thank you for that. Just a quick question. So expungement removes, but a pardon, if I committed a crime is that still viewable for a potential employer? And then there's something attached that says, I have been pardoned for this, or is that not available for viewing at all? Um, so you're you're correct. Um, the pardon does not destroy the file. So people could technically still go down to the courthouse and look at the file. You'd still be able to find it on CCAP but it would show a note that this case has been pardoned. So if an employer is looking at it, then they should know that they can't discriminate against you for that. 
Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Um, and what steps should individuals who are interested in being or beginning the process of seeking pardon or an expungement follow? I would say if you think, or if you're, you know, if your criminal record is causing any issues with employment or housing, call legal action. Uh, our intake line is 855-947-2529. We do have some income limitations, so we can only represent people whose income places them under 200% of the federal poverty guidelines, um, but uh, our intake office will kind of run through some financial questions with you and other questions just to make sure you're eligible for our services. But yeah, I would say first thing, contact Legal Action and see if there's something we can do to help. Um, if legal representation is not possible or you don't want legal representation, I would recommend reviewing the official website of the governor for all the pardon information. The pardon application is on that website. The website also includes a bunch of answers to commonly asked questions. It's just a really great resource for people who are interested in applying for a pardon. So a couple for expungement. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My apologies. Um, one, I just wanted to confirm that I had that number correctly because I'm going to put that in the chat. 855-947-2529. Correct. All right. So that is now in the chat. Um, do you need legal representation in order to go through the pardon process? Or is that like not required, but recommended? Is it pretty straightforward? And a lay person would probably be able to handle that on their own? Um, it is not required, so you do not need an attorney. Um, I would say that having an attorney can be helpful because it is a bit overwhelming. While the application can be somewhat straightforward, it's very lengthy. You also have to obtain the records from the court, which can be pricey. Um, and at least for legal action clients, we can cover those costs. Um, it's also just helpful because the process for applying can be sort of traumatic. Um, Retraumatization is a thing for a lot of people applying for a pardon, um, and it can just be helpful to have somebody there supporting you through it. But, you know, um, you do not need an attorney. It's not a requirement. Okay. And then one other question before you continue and explain the process for expungements to us. Um what is the fee structure at legal action? Is it dependent on the client? Is it a flat fee? How does that work? So we are a nonprofit, so we do not charge for our legal services at all. We don't have a sliding scale or anything like that. As long as you qualify financially, given our grant restrictions, and we have an attorney who's available to help you, you can get help at legal action. Um, it's yeah, as long as you're as long as you're financially eligible, you'll never get a bill, never get a bill from legal action. Thank you. And then if a if an individual is interested in the expungement process, um, what steps would they need to take to begin that? I would say if you think you might be eligible for expungement to check CCAP first, because sometimes there are notes that say the judge ordered expungement. Um, if it doesn't say on CCAP, that is, doesn't mean that the judge didn't order it. Sometimes it's just not on CCAP. So I would recommend getting the records from the courthouse, um, specifically the judgment of conviction or the minutes from the sentencing hearing. Um, then you can kind of look through those and see whether or not that was something the judge ordered. If it wasn't, then unfortunately expungement is not available to you. Perfect. That makes sense. So um, you talked about legal action um, and if an individual qualifies that they would never receive a bill, which I, I bet is a huge relief. Um, but what are the fees associated that if you were working with legal ac action, you said that could be covered? Um, but like for a pardon, for example, you don't have to have an attorney, but what are some of those fees that people can expect if they're not working with legal action or an organization similar to yours? So there's no fee to file a pardon application, but there are fees for getting the certified records from the court. So 
included in the pardon application, you have to include a certified copy of the criminal complaint, a certified copy of the information, and a certified copy of the judgment of conviction. You can get all of those from the clerk of courts. Um, and the copies cost around $1.25, $1.25 cents per page, but to have it certified costs an additional five plus dollars. So depending on how many cases you're asking for the governor to pardon, and depending on how many pages the criminal complaint, et cetera, are, um, it can get pretty pricey, um, upwards up to, you know, 50 plus dollars. And it, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So uh, as you do this work, and, and thank you for starting off with, with sharing um, the different committees you're on and the ways in which you're participating and engaging, um, can you speak to the racial justice impact of this work? Yeah. Uh, we know that the criminal justice system desperately impacts people of color, especially Black people. Um, and there's actually data that was collected by the Sentencing Project, if anyone's familiar with that. And they published a report in 2021 called The Color of Justice, which indicated that Wisconsin leads the nation in Black imprisonment rates. So one of every 36 Black Wisconsinites is in prison, at least in 20, from the data they collected um, and reported in 2021. Um, Black individuals also make up 42% of the prison population and only 6% of Wisconsin's population. So there's a huge disparate impact there. And that's really the result of explicit and implicit racial bias in our criminal legal system and all aspects from the arrest to the conviction, um, you know, even beyond that. Um, and pardons and expungements, while they can't resolve that injustice, they can help, like I said earlier, earlier remedy some of the collateral consequences of having a criminal record. Um, and you've shared this, but could you just take a moment on um, the need for an expungement and or a pardon and and in the absence of that can have far reaching effects on um, housing, education, economic, um, could you just speak, and, and generally, uh, of course, but what does that look like when that impacts a human being? So not information in a report that is critically important for us to have and to reference, um, but what does that look like for the clients that you assist? Mm -hmm. A lot of people um, come to us and if they can't find housing, um, because of their criminal record, there are certain convictions that just prevent you from obtaining like Section 8 housing. Um, so we represent people who are unhoused because they can't find a place to live. Um, we represent a lot of people who are unemployed or can't work their way up the ladder because of their criminal conviction. Sometimes people will have a job, it's low paying, and they'll try to apply for a raise or a higher position and their employer will pull their background check and say, oh, I didn't realize you had that on your record and reduce their wages or let them go. Um, there's a lot of discrimination when it comes to convictions. Um, whether or not that's right or legal is another question, um, but it happens all the time. Um, it's It also is just really affects people's ability to um, you know, live day-to-day -day life. Um, you know, volunteering at their kid's school is a huge one. Um, if you have a felony on your record, you might not be allowed to attend field trips or be on the PTA, things like that. Um, and so it really affects people's personal lives as well. Um, yeah. No, I appreciate you um, sharing what that actually looks like and what that feels like um, for the individuals and the families that are impacted. How can nonprofit um, organizations work to assist residents um, with expungements and pardons or getting the word out? So for pardons, I would say if you have the funding, helping someone pay for those certified records can be huge because if they can't afford those certified records, that can just be a complete bar to applying um, for the pardon. 
Um, I, I mentioned earlier to the, the re-traumatization that can happen when they're filling out the pardon application because it asks you to explain in detail the crime uh, that was committed and that can be really, really hard on people. So having someone there to be with them, to offer support um, can be huge. Um, the When you apply for a pardon, most people do have to go through a short five minute hearing as well. And that is done electronically. So it's not in person. I would say if your office has the capability to have someone there use one of your computers in your office to do the Zoom call um, or you know the, the hearing, that can be really helpful because people aren't familiar with technology or they don't like using Zoom um, or maybe they just have really bad internet connection. That can be that can be a really huge way to support. And then um, lastly, I would say if you've been working with someone really closely writing them a recommendation letter to include in their application is, um, it can be so powerful. If people don't submit recommendation letters, the pardon advisory board will ask them why. Um, and so we always recommend send in a recommendation letter, um, even just one. So if you're comfortable with doing that with someone you've worked with for a long time, that can be really impactful. Um, sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Um, so that's for pardons. Um, for expungements, I would say, um, encourage people to talk to their, um, attorneys about asking for expungement at the sentencing hearing, if they have a pending case, um, and then successfully completing probation is one of the hurdles that people have to, um, overcome to be granted an expungement. So just helping them keep keep on track with probation and, and reporting and all those requirements. So, and then lastly, if you just, you can refer people to legal action, give them our number or send me an email and say, hey, I have someone who I might wanna to refer to you. I'm happy to um, take those emails. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, and I appreciate that you're sharing um, ideas and ways that have a financial implication attached and those that don't, you know, sharing space and allowing for internet internet connection. Um, if they don't have stable internet, I, this is not something that you want to do at the library or at a place that has Wi-Fi. Um, so no, I appreciate you laying that out for us. So please share. I know that you are in the works of, of putting together or hopefully putting together this fall an expungement slash pardon clinic in Rock County uh, and working with the Greater Bloyd Economic Development Corporation. Um, do you have any information that you can share with us regarding that? Or are there places that people should keep an eye out for as soon as information is available? Yeah, so it is, I will say, in the very early stages of planning, but we are very grateful to the Greater Beloit Economic Development Corporation um, for uh, working with us on this project. We're very excited. Um, we are looking at dates right now in September, so probably later September, um, just to give us time to plan and give people, uh, well, give us time to plan and advertise and give people time to sign up. Um, we're looking at, we're definitely gonna be hosting it in Beloit. Um, so maybe the Beloit Public Library. Um, I'm working on creating a flyer, which will be distributed to different community groups in Beloit um, and then and Rock County. And there'll be a QR code for people to be able to sign up. Um, but if they don't wanna use a QR code, they can always just um, call Legal Action as well and we can get them signed up that way. Um, I think the number of people will have, a, uh, or the number of spaces we'll have available would be probably 12. Um, and if someone can't sign up for the clinic, you know, the day doesn't work for them or whatever, that's not a bar to, you know, getting in touch with legal action. Um, the, the clinic is really just, we're going to be in person, so it's convenient for people. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, we'll be distributing the flyer to all of our community groups. Um, and so I think the word will be, the word will get out. Um, yeah. 
No, I love that. And we are happy to share out and promote um, once you have those details finalized. Can you share with us kind of the structure of an expungement and pardon clinic? Um, I, we recall you saying that you've had several in Dane County. Um, what does that look like? How long is an appointment? It sounds like people need to sign up beforehand. What do folks need to bring with them? How does that work? Um, yeah, so folks don't really need to bring anything necessarily with them. We'll have everything printed off and all set to go at the clinic, um, but there will be half an hour appointments. Um, so it will likely be either, either a morning four hour slot or an afternoon four hour slot. I think we're looking at noon to 4 p.m. So um, each half an hour will be um, set for one person. I believe we're going to have two attorneys, so that's why we should be able to have 12 um, clients. And then, so you'll have half an hour for a meeting with an attorney. Um, I will be there, so I'll be one of them. Um, and we'll go through your background check, your criminal history report with you, and identify anything that might be able to be removed completely from your criminal record, um, anything that might be eligible for expungement, and then anything that might be eligible for a pardon. So um, we'll let you know if there's anything we can do, and then after the clinic, we'll follow up with you to see if there's if we can actually represent you in obtaining the, the pardon or the expungement or whatever it is you're eligible for. Um, the, um, removals, uh, of arrest cycles from background checks just require fingerprints as well on the form. So if there's something eligible to be removed, we'll just do the fingerprints right there at the clinic as well. And that way, um, you know, people don't have to, um, we don't have to schedule another appointment for people to come in and get the fingerprints done. Okay, so you said something that caught my attention. You'll review the information and look for things that can be removed, things that are eligible for expungement or pardons. Um, help me understand, because uh, a removal for me sounds like expungement, but maybe a quicker process. Uh, what is a removal and what is eligible? Sure. So the removal is um, the arrest record expungement that I referred to earlier. It's when um, you were arrested and either the, all the charges were dismissed or they were not prosecuted or you were found um, not guilty. So those in that situation, we can completely remove that record from your background check. For um, conviction record expungements, with all those restrictions, you know, have to be under the age of 25 and everything. Um, that, while it does remove the, um, or the court destroys the record, it takes it off of CCAP, it doesn't remove it from your background check. It just, it adds a note that says this case was expunged. So yeah, um, I don't know if that explains it. There's, there's so many different ent entities that maintain all these different databases and so it, it can be really frustrating for people when it's you know oh the case was expunged and you know it's not on CCAP anymore but when an employer pulls my background check it still shows up um it's yeah an unfortunate reality no and I appreciate you taking the time to to kind of walk us through the nuances um because if this is not your day-to-day -day life if this is not what you're immersed in I could see how individuals could get quickly overwhelmed with, oh, I thought this was handled, but then I didn't think about this. Um, so I really appreciate that. Yeah. And the criminal history reports can be so confusing to read as well. So it can be really beneficial to have an attorney just go through it with you piece by piece and explain everything because um, they're, they're not drafted in the most understandable way. So... No, that makes sense. Um, all right, so I have concluded all of my prepared questions. Madeline, you answered those beautifully and really helped to, to provide context. Um, so I, at this point, I will pause and ask any participants, um, hopefully you finished your lunch by now. Uh, if you are interested, feel free to turn on your camera and join us 
in this space. Um, and then I am happy to receive questions from the audience. So the way we'll do that, um, so we're not talking over uh, anyone, you can put a question mark in the chat and I'll know to call on you. Um, or you can type out your question. If your question um, you feel is sensitive in nature, you can send that directly to me. I'll share the question with Madeline, but definitely not um, the sender. So I will pause as you gather your questions. Um, looks like Jason already has one. Thank you for starting us off. Please go ahead and unmute. Thanks, Amy. Um, hi, Madeline. I'm uh, currently a prosecutor in Rock County, and I used to be a public defender. And you, through Amy's question, touched on subject that has always bothered me, and I'm just curious if you happen to know anything. When a person enters their plea, they do both between the form and the, the colloquy with the judge they walk through a large number of enumerated rights, you know, your right to a trial, to all of the evidence, you know, they're warned of collateral consequences. Like um, the law says you must warn everyone of potential immigration consequences, uh, even if they have full citizenship status, they still do it at every plea. I think it's largely considered in pretrial negotiations, but I mean, there are probably times where neither the state nor the defense attorney even thinks about expunction and then the case is closed and it's off the table now. So what I'm wondering is, is there any sort of push that you're aware of um, from either your office or from anybody that you've been kind of working with in the state to maybe work with the legislature to to just get a tiny little tweak in the law that says the form reminds you that if you're under the age of 25, like we should talk about expunction, it must be decided at this hearing and slash, or, you know, that the, the judge should do it as part of the colloquy. Yeah, so um, because of our grant funding through the Legal Services Corporation, we can't really do a whole lot of advocating for uh, the laws to change. Um, we can talk about how the laws impact our clients. Um, and I do know that earlier this, well, there was movement um, to change the law in Wisconsin um, to make expungement more broadly available to people um, because the requirements really are just so strict. Um, but I don't think that went anywhere. Um, but yeah, you're right. It would be it would be great if um, people were aware of their their right to ask for it um, and the requirement to ask for it at the sentencing hearing. Um, yeah, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. No, I appreciate that response, and we're definitely respectful of the constraints of grant funding. Um, and definitely want you to maintain that grant funding so you can keep keep helping people. Um. But I think in the absence of, of, like Jason pointed out, that requirement on one or all sides, um, I think it's really important for, for organizations um, that work with community members to be aware of that and to share that information. And I get that that's not perfect, um, but it's a start. All right. Um, anyone else? Don't be shy. Uh, again, you can put a question mark in the chat and I'll ask you to unmute or you can type your question out in the chat um, and I'll share that in case people don't have their chat open or you can send that to me privately and I'll do the same, um, but removing your identity. Madeline, while we're waiting for questions that may come in, um, are there other aspects of this work that I didn't think to ask you that are important for folks to know about um, that you would like to share? Um, hmm. I guess um, I would say, you know, there it's difficult to say in Rock County exactly how many people would be eligible for, you know, pardons or expungements, but we, I do know it's a lot um, there. And a lot of people just don't know that maybe pardons and expungements are an option, or maybe don't realize that a lawyer could help them with that. Um, I think it's like not something that you would have an attorney help you with. Um, so I guess I would just encourage uh, nonprofits who are working with people who've been affected by the criminal justice system just to um, let them know about legal action if it's something that they might be interested in. I'm always happy to talk to people, even if there's nothing we can do, I'm still happy to review the their background check and and make sure that everything is accurate. Sometimes there are 
inaccuracies or, I mean, rarely this happens, but identity theft issues um, can come up and, you know, someone, there's something on your criminal background check that wasn't you. Um, sometimes we can help with that as well. So it's, I think it's really, um, it's $7 to request your, your background check. Um, it might be just a good idea to request it and see what's on there. Yeah. You have me curious now. And, and <laughs> what entity would we reach out to, to, to check our, I mean, we check our credit and make sure that everything is accurate. Hopefully every so often um, I am learning in this moment that it may be a good idea to do a background check on myself um, and to make sure that everything is accurate. How, how does that work? What would be step one? Yeah, it's the uh, Crime Information Bureau, and they're um, an entity through the Wisconsin Department of Justice. Um, so that's that's where we uh, pull the background checks from. Um, and I believe anyone can. You might have to. I'm like an authorized user, so there might be like a different avenue for the public. Um, but I think it, it is the Crime Information Bureau. I don't if you if you're trying to figure out um, how to use their website, I would just recommend calling them, but yep. Perfect, good information. All right, I am, I'm multitasking. I am typing <laughs> out so we can get that information in the chat. Um, I don't see any other questions. So this is gonna be my okay. last call for questions um, while I pull up this website, which I will probably be, using later today or this week just to make sure everything's good um that others may be interested in as well and if you're not able to find it let me know and i can also link it but I, oh yeah i think you've got it okay all right so folks that is the crime information bureau and the website is there um hopefully that is pretty user friendly and if you're interested in doing a check on your your background so if we find something that is inaccurate um, are there instructions on there who we can contact or a form we can fill out to get that corrected? Yes, there is a form. Um, they have two different forms. One is the fingerprint record removal form, and um, that's for the removals we talked about earlier. Um, the other form is the arrest record correction form. So that's like um, sometimes they're missing the disposition. So maybe you we're found not guilty and it doesn't say it on there and you want it to say it, um, you know, you can correct that. Um, or like those identity theft issues that I mentioned, um, you would use that form for that. Perfect. Madeline, it has been a joy to speak with you. Thank you for one, agreeing to do this and the planning process with you has been fantastic. Um, I look forward to getting that information about the expungement and pardon clinic in Rock County. We are excited to get the word out about that. Um, but in the absence of any additional questions, thank you so much for the information you provided. I have a feeling people are digesting. Um, and this recording will be available on our YouTube channel. So for those on the call who wanna rewatch this or share this, please feel free to do so. Um, and Madeline, same to you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. You take care and thank you everyone for joining us.